Hi, welcome to Dev Central and this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to follow up last week's discussion on public cloud with a talk about private cloud. And so why why would you choose private cloud over public? And you know, there's some security reasons, and, and those would be maybe you have some regulation requirements, maybe that you, you just don't trust your um, applications, your keys, you know, whatever else sensitive data uh, that, that might be um, hosted on other people's servers that you don't have control over. And so, you know, there are security implications. And then, of course, it, you know, I mentioned control, and that's a, a big one for a lot of people. They just, they just want to control all the things. And so, um, for, for those uh, scenarios, you know, it, you, you don't have all control when it's in a public cloud. And so having a private cloud hosting on your own, um, on your own servers and your own data center, it uh, you know gives you that that full control, and of course with whatever cloud solution internally you end up uh, deploying, uh, you know fully customizable to your exact specifications, which is uh, not always possible in in the public cloud. And so, when you look at some of the pros and cons of private versus public, some of the pros uh, you know we talked about you have the the control, uh, the uh, the security, uh, the the flexibility and, and customization. But some of, the, some of the cons of that solution is that it is a higher upfront cost because you're using all of your own equipment. So you, you kind of have to stage out what you expect your cloud um, to be. And of course that rolls into uh, some capacity constraints because um, you know, if you under plan, that's not so good. But then of course if you, um, if you over plan, then you have uh, stuff you're not utilizing. So there's, there's cons there. Um, so, if, if we look at how traditional IT works, you have this manual process from the ground up. You have your, uh, you know, your L2 and L3 services, and these are your switches and routers that you're uh, manually deploying physically in, 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 uh, in racks, and then you um, are also having to manually configure them. And then you have your L4 through L7 uh, services as well, and and these are uh, things that you like on a, on a big IP. You're manually configuring all the system stuff to talk to layer two and layer three, excuse me. But you're also um, configuring your pools, virtual servers, all your profiles, and there's this. Um, and we'll just say you know traditional IT here, and then of course you have your your applications running on top of all these services. And so this traditional model, and we'll just say traditional IT, this traditional model is possible in a cloud environment. You can duplicate all of this effort from a physical representation into a virtualized um, implementation. And to a certain extent, when we deployed to um, the cloud Dev Central several years ago, I think it was back in 2012, we, we fairly much replicated this experience into our VMware, um, uh, our, it was a hosted VMware implementation of the, the vCloud uh, package from VMware. And, and this is kind of the model, we took traditional IT and virtualized it, and we just happened to not host it, somebody else hosted it for us. And we did have some automation, um, but, but by and large it was a, a traditional uh, deployment. And so when you start to look at a transition from this traditional IT stack to a, a, a cloud deployment, you're now starting to look at some automation and orchestration. And so if we have our orchestration These are our orchestration tools, and um, you know things like uh, from uh, from the private cloud side, like your OpenStack heat templates or a Blue Medora uh, for uh, VMware, um, even Ansible. You know we talked about that in a, a public cloud environment, but you can as well use that in a private cloud. And so, if you take these apps and orchestrate them, but then you also have uh, in addition to the application orchestration, you have your, you know, your L2, L3 services, 
And that's where your SDN controller comes into play. And you know something like uh, uh, controlling your uh, your physical switches, uh, even maybe your your uh, your virtualized switches. You know the SDN controller is going to take care of that, and that's going to come down here and take care of these L2 L3 services that you know before you would have to manually um, control. Now you have opportunity to um, to orchestrate those services, and you know the end the end goal is you want to take away as much of the uh, the tedium of your operations team that manages this, but also the uh, requirements on your app team to wait for those services or the requirements of your app team to learn those services and deploy them themselves. So the, as much as you can automate, then it, it, it frees up all of your uh, staff, whether it's network or, or application, uh, to do more important things. And so then if we look at our next layer, and this is our L4, L7 services, and, and this is where you know your, your big IP comes into play. So you know your F5 lives here, um, same as in traditional IT, but now you know we can actually uh, orchestrate that. And you can do that uh, directly from one of your orchestration uh, tools here. So you can come in at the, the app layer. You can also come in here at the L4, L7 layer. Um, you can come here through uh, for L4, L7 services as it relates uh, to uh, some of the SDN services and come in this way. And then, uh, and, and so, you know, this is kind of how the, um, all the, the services work together. Uh, between L2, L, uh, L2, L3, and L4, L7. But then, you know, you have iWorkflow in here as well. And this is F5's tool to kind of take over a lot of what you would do um, with third-party tools in this orchestration uh, area. You can actually kick off those, um, those workflows to iWorkflow, and then it through iApps, uh, through API calls, um, can then manage and configure these L4, L7 services um, on behalf of these other uh, orchestration tools. So, the uh, you know the the sky's the limit, public or private cloud. But this is kind of more uh, you know your private cloud. If you're looking at you know OpenStack, um, and I'll just put you know. OpenStax heat templates, you know, combining with iWorkflow, and there's a lot of different uh, deployment um, opportunities. Uh, you know, L2 up, you can do single NIC, multi NIC. Um, you can deploy a, a device services cluster, and all of that managed through uh, this uh, these heat templates. And so, you know, I, I mean, there's all kinds of things that we could talk about in private cloud. We could dig down into the details of you know, VMware or OpenStack deployments, but, you know, this is kind of the overview of how private cloud deployments work. And, and you know, we talked about the, the benefits of, you know, controlling all the things and, and, uh, and you know, securing all of your assets. And, and, uh, and so it's really just a trade-off at the end of the day of, you know, do you want that control um, or do you want um, the, the cost savings? And so... Uh, we can uh, address uh, more issues and, and dive deeper on any particular um, specific technologies you have within the, the public or private clouds. Uh, leave some comments down uh, below in the article um, and, uh, and we'll address them. So we'll see you out there in the community and thanks for joining us.